one of the one of the interesting things that I uh, I love about storage, like when you take multifamily, you're when you're trying to identify an area where to lend, you're looking at MSA data, you're looking at you know zip code data, all that stuff, um, which is you know fairly broad reaching. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're looking at storage, like you're not looking, I mean, that doesn't mean anything to you, right? You're, you're more granular. So can you, can you kind of talk to people about, about what you're looking at, how you identify uh, an area that you would want to either build or take a development or, or not development, but a, a, a rehab on? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you hit the nail on the head there, Jonathan. So self-storage is a hyper-localized business. And so what I mean by that is the trade areas or the areas that the majority of our customers come from are actually very narrow. And it typically depends on how dense the area is as far as population. So the type, the type of adaptive reuse or the type of um, value add deals that we like to buy are typically in secondary and tertiary markets, which means that the trade area is anywhere between three to a five mile radius around the facility. And what we found is that 60 to 90% of our customers will come from inside that trade area. And you say, okay, why, why is that? Just kind of think of it logically. I, I'm a mother. I have two kids. I got to drop my at school, got to go to work. I see it, the same facility on my drive between work and home every day until finally I realize I need storage for some reason. I'm not going to drive 20, 30 minutes in the opposite direction just to go save $5 a month. It's just not worth my time. So what I'm going to do is I'm typically going to go to the facility that I see on my daily commute or one that is within five to 10 minutes drive time of either my home or my work. Uh, So when you realize that, then all you really have to focus in on is that that hyper-localized market. So you can't say things like self-storage is saturated in the United States or self-storage is saturated in Chicago. All you can say is, well, this three to five mile pocket may be saturated. Let's look five miles away and see if that pocket has a need for storage or is undersupplied. Yeah, I think that's, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand because I hear that all the time. All oh, storage units, you know, storage facilities are saturated. It's like everyone's doing it. And it's like, yeah, the, the, a lot of people are doing it. But just for the point that you made, it's you, you, you can't say, oh, Charlotte has too many storage units. That, that's a useless piece of information. What's, you know, what's useful is, well, what pockets are oversaturated and then which ones aren't like you just described. So that's, yeah, that's a great, great point for people looking for storage units. Yeah. And, and to get granular, I know this is, this shows all about the numbers. What we'll measure inside of that trade area are two things and we'll weight them differently. So the first is called the supply index number. That is the total amount of net rentable square footage offered in that trade area divided by the per capita or the number of people in that trade area. So typically we want to see somewhere below seven square feet per person in that area. Around seven is where we start to see that the market is somewhat stabilized. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a caveat to that. The second part of this equation is looking at the competitors. If all the competitors are at 90 plus percent occupied, that means that there is a good chance that that market is undersupplied. So you can go into a market that is, say, growing extremely fast and find supply index numbers that are in the 10 or 11 or 12, like you see in Florida. I've been looking at deals down in Florida where the supply index is 18, 19, 20 square feet per person. But that's because the markets are growing so fast that they can't even keep up with the amount of population moving into that market. So what we typically do is we'll give a 30 to 40% weighting on the supply index number. And mm-hmm. then we'll give a 60 to 70% rating on the competitor, what rates the competitor are charging, and then what their occupancy is. And if we can come into that market, fill that whole charge at competitor pricing or just below, then that's going to be a good deal for us. 